Romans chapter 3. But he that is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. What advantage then has the Jew over what or what profit is there of circumcision? Much very way, every way. Chiefly because that unto them the Jews were committed the oracles of God, Exodus 20. To the Jews, they were given the word of God, the law of God. What God expected, what God wanted, was given to no one else but to the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They were given what God told them. Moses wrote it all down. The first five books of, of, of the Bible. For what if some did not believe? Well, that's interesting. Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Well, you know, I don't believe that God, I don't, you know, I don't believe God said that. I don't know how they could say that, but God said it in the mouth. Uh, you know, they grew up later. I don't believe God said it. I don't believe all that. You got people like that today, but we're talking about Jews. When it came to that law, many of their kings we read about in 1st, 2nd Chronicles, 1st, 2nd King, we read, they didn't believe. So does that make God without effect? Does that make the word of God of no effect because they don't believe? God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. We hold all 66 books. But the Jews don't have, didn't have. And everything in here is God spoken. God inspired. Yeah, men wrote it, but God told the men what to write. And if there are some that don't believe... Let you be the liar and let God be right. I don't believe there's a hell. Okay, well, guess what? God's going to call you a liar. And when he charges you and finds you guilty, he'll cast into the lake of fire you that are the liar. And God will come out holy and right because he told you. There's hell through your whole Bible. Just because you don't believe. I don't believe I bring an, uh, a lamb to the to the gate, or if I bring an ox to the gate, that God will, well, God said it, you will be found a liar. When you go against what God has said, more so for the Jew, and let us get in these first chapters of Rome, the Jews are without excuse because God spoke to them and written to them. I said yesterday, I am more unexcused than a Christian who's just say, because I've studied and learned the word of God, and God has spoken to me the word. I have a lot more to have to give an account for than your average Christian. And that's what the Jews are now. They have it all. They are without excuse. We're going to see, as we read today as a family, did you read where it says Isaiah said, I'm going to call people who are not no people. I'm going to call those Gentiles to believe on me. That's all in the scriptures. Paul, through the book of Acts, went in the Old Testament scriptures, the law of Moses, went in the prophets and showed them Jesus. And just because they don't believe, God is right, man's a liar. There's no excuse. 48 prophecies about one man came to exact, exact, exact 100%. Well, we don't believe that he's the Messiah. He, he's just a troublemaker. We'll put him on a cross. We'll crucify him. You're the liar, and God's right. Talking about Jews now. Just because a man of Israel who had all that said, I don't believe. You think that's going to change God? You think by saying, oh, I'm an atheist, God's going to disappear. Oh, i got to go. See you guys later. You know, He didn't believe in me. That thou mayest be justified in thy sayings, God's sayings. Justification how? And what God said. What was Noah's justification? Build an ark. What was the Jews' justification? Bring these sacrifices. Go to this place. Do this. Do that. What was the what were the Jews to do in the time of John the Baptist? Come to John, repent, and be baptized. 
That's what God said. And Paul's complete ministry to the Jews in the book of Acts is what God said in the Old Testament. And you'll see that we've read that over and over. He, he went in the synagogues and he spoke to him out of the prophets. He spoke to him out of Moses. He spoke to him out of the scriptures. The only scriptures he had was the Old Testament. And mightest overcome when thou art judged. So everyone's going to face judgment. And the only way you can come out overcome and justified. Whatever day and age you live in is, did you do what God said? And the man that unbelief of what God said, he won't, he won't overcome. And there are people, we're getting to Gentiles here, but there are people, the Bible says in Revelation 20, that the books are open and their name was found written. They did what God told them to do. But getting back to the Jews, I, I sidestepped there, shouldn't have, apologize. If those Jews did what the law said and believed, they would overcome. And a lot of those kings did not, as our example we read. When you read those kings of Judah, you ought to realize, you know what? They lost it all. They lost the city. They lost people. They lost, they lost lives. I better not live like that. But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who take his vengeance? I speak as a man. God is love. He would throw no one in hell. And that's what men say. And yet they forget God is a righteous God. God is a holy God. What are you going to do with that? God has to do right. I don't care what man has to say. Let man be the liar. Now it says in, in uh, verse 4 again, we go back that thou mayest be justified in thy saying and mightest overcome when thou art judged. In the context of Psalms 51, that's where it's quoted from, it's a different context. And when you take Psalms 51, if I have my note here, in Psalms 51, it's God judging. And Romans 3, it's men's judging. And we've already talked about judging yesterday. Man judges for good or for bad. God judges holy. There is no bad judgment with God. But if our unrighteousness come in, the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous? Imagine charging God with being unrighteous. Do you realize the righteousness of Jesus Christ is what saved me? I'm the one that's unrighteous. So God is a mean, nasty God if he take his vengeance. I speak as a man. Paul's telling us, you're going to run into people who say, God is love. He hurt nobody. He wouldn't do anything like that. And Paul says, speak as a man. God forbid. For then how shall God judge the world? God's going to judge all in all. Now, if I judge somebody, I can be wrong. I can misapply the scriptures. But God is the righteous God, and one day he'll say, enter into the joy of the Lord, or depart from me, workers of iniquity. Oh, that God wouldn't say that. But God is the judge of the world. For if the truth of God have more abound through my lie unto his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? Comes down to lying. Men are liars. God is not. 
You better rest assured, I don't know how many words are in the Bible. I have no idea. There's been counts and all that, and they've been found to be wrong. My words shall never pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words shall never pass away. Every single one of these words are going to survive eternity. And yet, in the Bible, there's recorded lies. Men who have lied. Well, that wasn't God. We're told in, in Hebrews, we're told in Titus, we're told in uh, one of the Samuel that God cannot, is not able, and will never lie to us. You can make God a liar. That doesn't change his judgeability. You may want God to be that kind of judge, but it's not going to do it. Though I lie. I can get up and I can, I can please everybody if I want and just get up and preach that loving, flowery God that's going to take everybody underneath his arms and bring everybody into heaven. They all would love that. And then I would be found a liar at the judgment. And yet God is judge. And I'd be found as a sinner. And not rather, as we be slanderous reported, but as some affirm that we say. Now, what's going on, Paul saying, there are people who are saying, I say this, let us do evil that good may come, whose, damn, whose damnation is just. People are saying that Paul is saying that. And Paul is saying it, it's damnation what they're saying. People are saying, I'm saying a lie about the judgment of God. It's a lie. Let us do evil? Really? Paul telling you that? So you already got people taking Paul and misusing his words and counting him as, a, as words of lies. It's getting around. No one of a Christian of righteousness would say, oh, if I do evil, good will come from it. Really? That's not God. And Paul used that illustration to say when we're talking about the judgment of God. If you are found unrighteous, God is not going to give you a good judgment. That's impossible. You cannot say today, I did something in the name of whatever religion and say, well, God's going to let me get to heaven because, you know, because that's what I've been saying. That's what my instructor in my religion has been saying. And let man be a liar and let God be true. He's going to judge you by Jesus Christ. No matter what men teach, no matter what men say, and even if you say the apostle himself is lying, which they say is true, quoting him wrong, God is still true and man is still a liar. So man lies and man will say a lie that someone else has said. This world is full of liars. Yet God is true. I can lie to you. I can say I'll meet you tomorrow at 4 o'clock and drop the Lord willing. And not be there for four o'clock and have a reasonable excuse, but I lied. And yet God says, when I had set a time for something to happen, there was that time perceived by Jesus Christ to be born. And there was a specific time for Jesus Christ to take his last breath. 48 prophecies and they all came to be. And people don't realize if 48 prophecies came to be 100%, all the rest of them are going to come. And on God's timeline, now there are people out there who say, well, Jesus Christ is coming in 2017. Jesus Christ will come in 1998. Uh, Jesus Christ has came to World War One. Jesus Christ came. You're all liars. And yet when God says he's going to come without giving us the date, that date, whatever God has set in the heaven, will come and God will be true. The rapture will happen. The seven years tribulation will begin. The seven years tribulation will end. The millennium will start. The millennium will end. There will be the judgment seat of Christ. God knows all those times and God's correct. And yet there are false prophets out there saying that they know what God knows that we are not supposed to know. They're liars. And what's it all about? Judgment. What then? Are we better than they? Talking about the Jews over the Gentiles because we have the law, because God spoke to us. Do you remember reading how they acted in the wilderness for 40 years? 
They came up. Rahab, yeah, can you hide us? Sure. Before you guys go to bed, yeah. Can we join your God? Because we. How's that? Naaman. Oh, I got leprosy. Let's go to the God of Israel. Let's go to the king of the God of Israel. He'll help me. Man, the Gentiles were seeking after God better than what the Jews were doing. They had the law. They had the fire and the mountain, the earthquake, and they had God written the Ten Commandments. Are they better than us? No, they're sinners. And how many of them went into hell? There was a whole family class that the earth opened up and swallowed them up into hell. They were Jews. They were of Levite. No, not Levites. Korah. Korah. His family. No. And no wise. Well, isn't that what the Jews were proclaiming in the Gospels and in the book of Acts? We're of Abraham's seed. We're of Moses. We're Moses' disciples, even though he never had any. No. And no wise. For we have before pro pro proved both Jews and Gentiles, that they are all under sin. You know, you know what the Jews and Gentiles have in common? We're sinners. So now there is no difference between men. We're all sinners. As is written, I can't see that letter. I hear that I. No, there is none righteous, no, not one. So made notes in my Bible. Genesis 6, 5. None of us, absolutely none of us, are righteous. So that explains why Jesus had to come in his righteousness. Because I am not righteous. Never have been, never will be. Except for in Jesus. I'm talking about in my flesh. Gentile or Jew. We're not righteous. Do whatever you want to do. You're not righteous. You got to take on Christ's righteousness. There is none righteous. It don't give age group. There is none that understandeth. What? What God really wants. That law was an example to show you Jesus Christ. And we're going to read later on in Romans, that law was given to show, guess what? You're a sinner. If there's anything that law was supposed to show, you sin. You're not right. You can't do it. There is none that seeketh after God. How many, I, I'm going to just give an age. I, I'm very poor in ages, but I'm going to say a five-year-old. I could be younger or little. How many five-year-olds are sticking their hand in a cookie jar knowing they're going to steal that cookie that mom and dad told them that they're not to? And when they take that cookie, break down and say, God, I, I'm sorry. Forgive me for my sins. I, I really didn't mean to steal that cookie. Absolutely none of them. You're as much seeking God as a person who's broken in a house to steal the stuff in the house is calling 911 to get the police. He said, well, people are, are in religions. They're seeking God. That's not God. Because God would show up. That shows you right there religion's wrong because if you're there, the true God will show up, not Satan. When you got something that will take you away from the word of God, forbid you to, wear, uh, the, the, to read it, forbid you to look at it, forbid you to have it, or even change or correct it, you're definitely not seeking God. You're going away from God. They are all going out of the way. Jesus said, I'm the way. Well, in, 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 in what I believe, uh, we got to get in the momiba and cross our legs. And what kind of way is that? In our religion, we got we to reference all living things as one thing. And all. What, what way is that? When Jesus said, God, I am the way. What did he say after that? I am the way, the truth. Well, what have we been talking about here? How do you know that Jesus was no mere man? We've been reading about man. Let 
God be true, every man a liar. Well, that's not Jesus. So God has to be Jesus, Romans chapter 3, because Jesus never and cannot, is not a liar. They are all together become unprofitable to God. Come on, what can, in, in all reality, what can man do for God? Really? The one that said in Genesis 1, let there be heavens, let there be animals, let there be sun. Just by the voice of God, creator said, let there be. What can men do to please God? Revelation 4 says we're to give praise to him. We are to glorify him. That's the only thing man can do. We were made to praise God. And if you're not searching God and you're a liar, you're not doing what God has said. You are unprofitable. Unprofitable. You can't produce anything that God can use. You have no good fruit. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. So rule out, I'm good. Because the Bible says, no, you're not. <laughs> and you can fight with them all day long. I'm good. Well, no, you're not. You just cut out this verse and say, here. Every time you say you're good, read what the verse says, because you're not. Their throat. Now, this is what man is in the eyes of God 13 18 this is what God thinks about the sinner God hates the sin but loves the sinner let's see what God has to say about it. their throat is an open scepter that's death that's where you put a dead body that's where Martha said four days he stinketh there's bad breath right there your throat you your mouth stinks and holds death with their tongue they have deceit come on god you can be better than that about me i've never told a lie you just did shut up the poison of ass is under their lips you got snake venom you are of your father, the devil, John 8, 44. Run that back to Genesis chapter 3 and run that back to the hooch in the last or the second to last, the song that Moses wrote in Deuteronomy. You know what God sees when he sees you? He sees that you're deadly, you stink, you got deceit, and you're like the serpent. God hates to sin, but loves the sinner. Really? You haven't studied the Bible. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. You know, you notice how he, it's the throat, it's the mouth. It's, you notice how when he attacks man, he attacks him by the mouth. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Proverbs 1, 11 to 19. Just before he talks about the street preacher going in the gate. You guys are out to kill. You imagine how things would be if we were, if any place in this world, any part of the nation or country were completely lawless. You realize how many people would die for covetousness? If the law had no forbids, no jail time, no uh, capital punishment, you can just do whatever you want. You realize how much the, where was the law, ready, with Cain and Abel? Nothing prevented Cain killing Abel. Destruction and misery are in their ways. Oh, look at that. The way of peace have they not known. <laughs> I ran to that guy today. Check out our video today on November, uh, yeah, November 26, 2016 about the scorner. Wish I knew this verse. There's two verses I wish I quoted the guy the verse. 
when he ran away. I was the way of peace, and, and that guy just proclaimed for the last three, four weeks now. The United Nations do not know the way of peace. And yet people give money and they're in love with the United Nations. The Pope does not know what peace is. There is no fear of God before their eyes. That's what God thinks of loving, I mean, hating the sin and loving the sinner. You're filthy. You're not good. You're not righteous. And these are the kind of people you want in heaven? But kick, but kick Adolf Hitler out, right? He was a mean, nasty guy. Don't let Trump into heaven. He's a mean, nasty. Wait a minute, you're judging. You want the whole world to be in heaven, but a few people that you don't like. I'm sorry, that's not how it works. Either we get your way, everybody goes to heaven. Or we get it God's way where only the holy righteous get to heaven. And there's only one way to get that way. And it's not your way. Now, we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them that are under the law, the Jews, that every mouth may be stopped. Imagine a kid who was got stoned by the city because his parents brought him and say, this kid will not listen to me. And he stands before God by that. Honor that mother father. Uh, a, guy, a man in the Old Testament, a Jew, is going to stand before God. He's got little dollies and all that in his life. And, and he's going to speak for God. But God, uh, thou shalt not have any images or idols. That guy's got to remain silent. A man that coveted his neighbor's stuff ends up before God. But God, but thou shall not covet. So you see what the law did is when they stand before God, the Jews, they're about to say their excuse and God's going to quote from the law saying, excuse done. The law makes you guilty. And like I said, as I say down at the farmer's market every week, I try to say, you cannot stand before God and say you never knew the word of God. Say, he spoke my word. No excuse. To them that are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped. And all the world. Wow. Wait a minute. I thought we were talking about Jews. And yet, remember those, the Abimelechs of, Jer of uh, Abraham, or Abram, and Isaac, and the Pharaoh of Abram? You are going to bring this great sin of adultery upon us. They didn't have no law. By God. And yet, adultery was a law. After Cain, all the world knew murder was wrong. And when Noah came out of that ship, that ark, God told him, from now on, anybody who kills another man, he's supposed to die to death. So when Noah came out of that ark, every person who was murdered somebody. Wait a minute, was Noah under the law? No. And yet, didn't God give him some commandments? There you go. What, what about Abram? Was he under the law? No. But didn't God tell him about circumcision? And if no one's to be circumcised in your house or your seed, they're to be... Wait a minute, see? So there is a law. There is a commandment. God told Adam, do not eat of any of that fruit. That fruit, do not eat. He disobeyed God and brought death, pain, and suffering. And what are you going to say to God today? Your mouth is stopped by God saying, don't eat that fruit. Well, God, it's Adam's fault. 
God's just going to laugh at you. Oh, so I, oh, man, of quadrillions amount of people, I never heard anybody say that. Oh, I guess go, go on into heaven. Here's your pass. Wow. And yet psychiatrists say it all the time to their patients. It's your mother's fault. It's your father's fault. Your grandmother dropped you on your head or something. Big deal. How many humans have been affected by Adam and Eve? Get over it. The law is made to be stopped before God. Now, I've got, you go up to God and say, well, why should I let you into heaven? I've got the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Amen. Welcome. And that, that won't shut God up. You mean my son? Yes, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is you, God, and God, you are him by your blood. Actual, come on in. Let's have a let's have a great old time like that paragon son. Amen. And then the, the brother who's upset stands outside. You didn't do anything for me. Mm -hmm. And that son is left in darkness and, and nothing to be. And the party keeps going on. Yeah. That law is to make you say the, the little blue lights pulls you over. Well, officer, what's the problem? That speed limit sign said 55. Well, what's the problem? You were doing 75. And you can fight all you want. You can go to the courtroom all you want. And when that cop shows that report to the judge and says, hey, 20 miles over, you can't say nothing. If you do, you're stupid. You're American. That guy today, for two or three weeks now, peace, peace, peace. He finally got it, and I gave it to him, and he ran away with the devils. I watched the video. I said to the guy, come over here. I will show you peace in the Bible. You've been asking. You've been asking. You, you didn't expect me to give you an answer. You didn't expect me to cross that street with an open Bible and give it to you. I shut you up. How? Your mouth was stopped. How? By the word of God. Not me. And it's amazing how this chapter comes up after that happened today. And all the chapters we read up to chapter 11 of Romans and all the peace we saw. And I've got that peace. When you do what God tells you to do. And that child of yours stands before God and says, God, blah, blah. He's going to call that praying, crying mother that's been on her knees for you and say, hey, shut up, boy. You went over the knees of your mother. You went over the te tears of your mother into hell. No excuse. Shall we play the Christmas carols now that you heard over all the years in America? Joy to the world, the Lord is come. It's hard to go to hell in America when I grew up as a child because it was all about Jesus. Can't say that today. You got adultery today. Santa Claus kissing my mother. Therefore, the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his God's sight. Are you really going to walk up to God and say, I fulfilled all the law? Really? You can't get by the first one. The first one is God first all the time, every time. I fail that one every morning. When I look at that alarm clock, oh, man. You know, my first prayer is not praising God. God, please give me a little more time to sleep. That's not praising God. And if I were to be judged by that law without Jesus Christ, I would go to hell because every morning I don't give God the praise. Never mind two, never mind three, never mind four, never mind five, never mind the Ten Commandments. I can't get by the first. If I'm not honoring my parents, I'm not honoring God. If I got idols, I'm definitely not honoring God. God said to them, work six days. You work seven days, you're not honoring God. No flesh, no flesh shall be justified in his sight. So how can you be justified by God? By the Spirit of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. It's the only way. 
If your religion, if your ways are flesh, you will not stand before God in greatness, in righteousness. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Again, Cain had no idea murder was wrong. There was no law. But you know what Cain did learn? You know what Abel, I guarantee mom and dad taught him. You know what they did teach those two boys? I guarantee, I don't know how old they were. I guarantee mom and dad taught them this. At least dad maybe. Whatever God says, you better do it, boy. And I'm not saying this as a joke. I'm being dead serious. Because I'll tell you right now, we did not listen to what God told us. And we got eaten out of house and home. We didn't listen to God. We lost it all, boys. You bet when God tells you to do it, you better do it. So what's the next scene you sing about those boys? Ab uh, Abel's bringing a perfect sacrifice that is proof of God. Look at that. Cain didn't listen to God, did he? You knew Cain had to know because Abel knew. And look what Cain did. And yet the Bible says Abel is at, will be in glory by the righteousness of God. Cain won't. But now, now, right now, all right, we're off the Jews right now today. The righteousness of God without the law is manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. You see what Paul's been doing? He's been using the law and the prophets to show the Jews about the righteousness today. In his time, he's writing. You are able to take the Old Testament law and show somebody the righteousness that God expects. That Passover lamb, everything that had to do with that Passover lamb and the Passover, you can reference it to Jesus Christ and our living the way we should be living and doing right. And the end of that, you leave Egypt and you don't go back. When you went back, there was trouble. Don't bring no leaven. And head to the promised land. And don't gripe and complain. Even the righteousness of God, which is by the faith of Jesus Christ. Oh, well, you see? Now look what Paul just said. What is the righteousness that God expects from us? Jesus Christ. Unto all and upon all them that believe. How do you get righteousness from God through Jesus Christ? How do I do that? Believing. You mean I don't twiddle beads? I don't get wet i don't know and he's speaking to the romans for all have sinned well then it says for there is no difference for all have sinned everybody sins so everybody needs christ as their righteousness but my mama was i don't care what your mama was if your mama was saved, had Christ's righteousness, amen, glory to God. What about you, son? My church, it didn't say church. Where is peace? Where is peace? By the righteousness of Jesus Christ. There's peace. For all have sinned. That's a pretty bold statement. One man in quadrillion, how many humans are, never sinned. That's Jesus Christ. And there are people out there who will say they have not sinned. Have you read, was it, the first John that says, if you say you have no sin, you make him a liar? Well, wait a minute. If you say you have no sin, never mind First John 1, 8 and 13, I think it is. Now, aren't we talking about let God be true of a man a liar? If you come to me, and I've had people come to me, oh, I've never sinned. But what did 23 just say? 
You just made the Bible a lie. You made God a liar. You're going to stand before that. But the problem is, let God be true and you be the liar. Now, you see why John wrote that? There's no way by Paul and John that you could say you're without sin. For all have sinned, come short the glory of God. So what is the glory of God? Not sinning. That's That brings glory to God. You're not sinning. And you can do it until the flesh steps in. And then once the flesh steps in, well, you've got 1 John 1, 9. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins if we confess our sins. And then you're glorifying God again. Being justified, being justified freely without cost. Don't pass a collection plate. By the grace, by, no, by his grace. Who's the his? God, Jesus Christ. Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. The buying back is done through Jesus Christ. He buys you back from Satan and death by the cross. You know, we used to have a thing is you bought soda. You go back to the store and put the cans in the machine. You would get your redemption money back, your five cents. If you didn't bring the can back, you didn't get your five cents. You were God's. Satan came along and took you. You need to go back to God. And that payment is the blood of Jesus Christ upon Calvary's cross. And once you get that payment, you don't ever go back to Satan, death, or hell anymore. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation. I can never say that word. This is a big, long word to say, you know what? Your God's. The payment has been made through the blood. Through faith in his blood. Not water. Not money. Through his blood. Now let me make another statement here. Modern Bibles take the blood out. Can you be saved by a Bible that has the blood removed? I don't think so. It has to be the blood of Jesus Christ. To declare his righteousness. I'm going to walk up to God. No, I'm not. I had one time, I had a guy one time, he's a Christian, he's going to walk up to Jesus, high five and say, my man, Jesus. I said, you man, idiot. I believe I'm going to be on my knees when I die, if, if I go by death, after from the body of presence with the Lord. And I, can, I believe I'm going to be humbly, we're going to be humbly bowing at the knee of Jesus Christ and saying, it's only because of you, Jesus, I get to go any further from here. And he'll bring me to God some way, somehow. And I'll be standing before that holy God only by the righteousness of Jesus Christ. We've already read, I ain't got no righteousness. I don't know how to do right. Righteousness for the remission of sins that are past. That's Old Testament. The blood of Jesus Christ cleansed all those Old Testament saints that died and went to Abraham's bosom. So you see, even the law couldn't get them. They had to wait for Jesus to die on that cross to be redeemed. And at that moment he died, the graves opened up and they're walking around with their little name tags. Hi, I'm Samuel. Through the forbearance of God. So if you're saved by the law, the law couldn't save you until Jesus died on that cross. You got trouble. You got to admit, if you are under law, you still got to admit the blood of Jesus Christ is what can wash and make you clean. Even if you're following the law, which you don't have to because we're free from the law. We'll see that more and more. 
to declare, I say at this time, now, right now, today, his righteousness, God's righteousness, Jesus Christ's righteousness, that he might be just, me, that I might be just, and the justifier, Jesus Christ, of him, me, which believeth on Jesus today. So the blood of Jesus Christ not only cleansed my sins of people today who believe on it, but he cleansed the sins of the, all the Old Testament saints that did what they were supposed to do. And Noah, and Abraham, and Isaac, and anybody else. So he shows that this period, at this time, there is no more law. The law is only to say, hey, I can walk up to somebody and open up the Revelation 20 and say, you ever told a lie? Oh, well, yeah. But I shall not bear false witness. Didn't God say, thou shalt not? You know what, thou shalt not? Yeah, I'm not supposed to, right? I know. You're not supposed to. That's a nice cross of Jesus you have between your breath. Uh Exodus 20 says, Thou shalt not have no images or, or idols. Isn't that an image or not? You're not supposed to have it. Now, see, I can use the law and say, Hey, you stand before God guilty. So I can use the law to say, Hey, you're doing wrong. And you're guilty before God. Now, I am not going to take them to bring a cow or calf. I'm going to take them to bring the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. I'm going to bring them up to John the Baptist proclaim, and I'm going to bring them what, what Paul said. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. How's that? Now watch. To declare, I say at this time, Jesus' righteousness, that he might, the person who... The, the man might be just, that's what we got to be, just, and the justifier, the, the, the sinner, which believeth in Jesus. Now, how you know it's not the law? Where is boasting then? It is excluded. You're not going to get to heaven again and say, well, I baptized more people than you baptized. Funny, Paul and Jesus did not do any baptizing. I guess they lose, don't they? See, the law will make you boast, but Jesus Christ will make you glorify. Who, by the righteousness of Jesus Christ, who gets the glorification? Who gets the worship? Who gets the joy? Who gets the praise? The one that's righteous. Who? Jesus. There's nothing else to boast but who? Jesus. By what law? Of works? Nay. But by the law of faith. What's the law of faith? Believing on the Lord Jesus Christ to make you justified before God by his righteousness. How's that? Though we conclude, therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Get the law out of my way. Bring me Jesus. Is he the God? Now here we go. <laughs> is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Now we had a big fight in the Book of Acts about these Gentiles and circumcision, and Paul's writing to the Romans, "Hey, just cut that out. There's no law at all." And remember when, when Paul came back to Jerusalem, the, the, the time that God told him not to, and James walks up and says, what are you doing telling these guys not to be served? They've heard about that. What are you telling these people? I know what he's telling them. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. There's no more law, James. Now, there may be law here in Jerusalem, but as we're going out over Asia and the Gentiles, there's no more law. See, Paul has a new revelation now by God. Is he the God of Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? That's me. Yea, also the Gentiles also. Seeing it is one God. That's kind of funny because there's a whole bunch of gods, but there's one capital G-O-D. 
which shall justify the circumcision, that's the Jew, by faith, and the uncircumcision, the Gentile, through faith. I don't understand the by and through. I'm going to just leave it like that. But you see what he said? Whether you're circumcised or you're not circumcised. God will justify you by the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Doesn't matter. Doesn't care. And that's so perverted today that there's a religion out there that will have women to do that. Circumcision. When it comes to find out if you're saved or not in eternity, God's not going to check that part of the body. He's going to check your heart. Romans chapter 10, 9 and 10. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid, yea, we establish the law. You know what that's supposed to mean? All right, I'm saved. I'm not saved by the law. But as now I am saved to be a proper Christian and do right, I ought to listen to that law and obey that law. Because if I don't, I'm going to be a terrible testimony. It would be weird to wear my Jesus shirt and my Jesus hat with a pocket of tracks and have a cop put me in handcuffs because I broke out of a window of a store carrying things that are not mine. When the Bible says, thou shalt not steal, the Bible says, I think it's Jane, no, I think Paul writes it. He says, to him that steals, let him steal no more, but rather work. So now the law has changed. It's not my salvation. It's, you know, it's proper conduct. It's, I mean, there's some laws, that, you know, you don't bring sacrifice no more. But there's still some things that in relationship to your neighbors, you ought not do or you ought to do. You know, you go out. And you, you find in your neighbor's yard, you're walking that, you see in your neighbor's yard, you see a $20 bill. You know, it'd be proper to walk that $20 bill to his door and say, hey, sir, I found this $20 in your driveway. Rather than saying the, the fleshy way, finders keepers, lose your weepers. That's not Bible. I don't know how many times I said that as a child and not knowing that that was anti-scriptural. Bible says you, if your neighbor, well, mine is rot rotters, I'm afraid of that. But, you know, if your neighbor's got, a, you know, a friendly dog or something like that, the Bible says you're to take that dog to his house, to somehow try to keep him in that yard and report to the neighbor, hey, I brought your dog back. And not and say, you know, they want your dog to get hit by a car when everything be okay. The Bible says you're to watch your neighbor's property when they're away. Now, that's not salvation. But that would make you that would make your neighbor look at him, hey, you know that guy's got the bumper stickers on the car? He you know, he, he's different. That guy's honest. They're hard to find today. And then you stand out and then your light shines. People proclaim, oh, I let my light. They have no idea because they don't read the Bible to find out what is right and what is wrong. <laughs> 